Going everyone. So uh, my free NAS server, which I use for storage for a lot of my uh, services I run, um, has been having issues in like the last week. Um, so this is kind of like the storage for my security system for my uh, next cloud, like cloud backup system, um, and my Usenet uh, Usenet uh, indexer as well. So all of those have been not working well for the last, uh, have not been working when this has been down. So this has been down for the last week on and off. And the reason is um, I started debugging, it, the server was actually shutting off and um, you could see that there was still light on the motherboard, um, but the it was off. And I think what it is, is something with the motherboard was wrong, uh, was was wor oh, not working. So I ended up debugging all the RAM sticks. So I took them all out and just tried running with one or two of them, uh, different combinations. I tried, um, tried uh, taking these cards out, I tried swapping the, the power supply and unplugging all the hard drives and USB and everything. And um, no matter what, even if you just sit in the BIOS, it'll shut off. So it's not an operating system thing, it's a hardware. So I knew it was either the motherboard or the CPU. So I got a new motherboard. Um, I've still uh, yet to plug it in. So I just I just replaced all the components, which took me, I don't know, an hour, an hour, hour and a half or something. It, took, it takes a while. So um, I figured, you know, now that it's out and open, I'll just show uh, everything that's in here since I haven't shown an update on this um, system in a long time. There's some significant changes. So yeah, this is my free NAS system. It, uh, like I said, is storage for uh, several things in my house. Um, I'm hoping that this motherboard swap fixes it and um, now it'll not randomly shut off every 10 minutes or whatever it was. Uh, it was random. It definitely, like you could sit in the BIOS for two minutes and it'll shut down or it'll uh, boot up and go for 10 minutes and shut down uh, or it could go 30 minutes but usually it was, a, it was much shorter so it wasn't very usable um, and it wouldn't reboot it would just shut down so um, so yeah the um, so the motherboard that I replaced was a X9 SCM um, kind of an older motherboard uh, for Sandy Bridge, Ivy, Ivy Bridge um, this one is an X9 SCM F so this one has a IPMI, you can see there's an, there's two network cards, regular uh, or network interfaces, and then there's an extra one right here, which is um, for uh, IPMI, so you can log into that interface and sh see stuff about the motherboard. You can shut it down and turn it on and see the console. I don't use that because I have a VGA, um, um, or I have a uh, um, I have this guy, so I can switch between uh, different servers. So like I can do that, but. Um, let me see, I logged out of there. Log out. So I have that when I'm physically here, um, and that's enough for me. I don't want to connect it up and just have more possible ways to get into this. So, um, yeah. So let me just go over the hardware in the system. Um, here is the. Uh, let's start with the power supply. I recently put this in. This is a um, Seasonic um, SS six twenty GM. So I'm guessing it's. Uh, 620 watts. Um, this server actually only uses about 100 watts when it's running. Uh, probably more when the hard drive spit up. Um, it is modular, so that's nice. I don't use all the cables because you know I don't need like a video video card cable or anything. Um, so that's the power supply. Um, it's been running well for the last whatever two months that I've had it. Motherboard S X9 SEM. This one's dash F. Um, the processor is an i3. 3220. So the key with these motherboards, the super micro, these uh, ones, is um, they need to use ECC RAM, which means you need a processor that supports ECC. So uh, for the Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge, that means you need to either have an i3 Pentium or um, uh, Pentium or Celeron. So all like the lower end. Skip the i5 or i7. You can't use those, or you need a Xeon. So you basically need an i3 or below or a Xeon. Um, so right now I'm an i3. Maybe I'll upgrade to a Xeon one day. Not for the um, CPU, but for other features. Because if you have a Xeon, you can then get um, like a, a Z, um, an Ivy Bridge Xeon. You can get PCI 3.0 on these first two slots, which might come handy in the future if I want to put like an NVMe card in there and get full speed. So that's something I might update. You can get a Xeon like um, like an E3 1220 or 1220L uh, V2. I might get one of those for like 60 bucks on eBay. But that'd be nice because then I could put uh, an NVMe card and use that as like a cache. Um, right now my caches are uh, these SSDs over here, but let me um, go over that. So 
power supply motherboard, CPU, uh, CPU cooler is, I guess, a Hyper 212. I'm not sure if that's the Evo. I need to replace this fan because you can see there's duct tape and I have the clip broke, but um, there's an extra clip, so I figure when I get a new fan, I'll, I'll put a new clip, so I'll get like a Noctua or something. Um, it's like 20 bucks though, so it seems expensive for a fan, but it might help keep this thing cool. So I, I, I have a feeling that it warming up is what causes components in this closet to die because this motherboard had issues booting up or just randomly shutting down. And at one point I had my modem, which is here. This is a different, uh, the older generation of this. This is a Zoom modem. Um, the Zoom, I think 5341 was the old one I had. This is an update, I don't know the model number. But the old one would not, after a certain point my internet shut down, like it wasn't working. And then what, what I found was this was trying to boot up and you could hear a buzzing and then it would shut down. So it was going through the boot process and it was, I think what happened is it was a capacitor was um, I mean, in, in high heat capacitors, what they do is they usually have like some type of gel that keeps their, keeps the insulation inside of it. And as that gel kind of dries out from being constantly warm, it loses capacitance. And now that capacitor can't hold as much charge and power your components when they need to be, you know, powered. So I'm assuming that's what happened with that. Um, that was about a year or two ago, like a, a, during summer. And then this, this thing died also during summer and summer has been very warm this year and very constant, like every day has been warm. So I'm assuming the capacitor died on the old motherboard. So um, I still don't have a solution to keep this closet cooler. Um, I am gonna change my floors to wood. So that'll maybe give us, that'll drop this. It'll be like a vinyl. So it'll, um, there will be no pad in the carpet. So that will give it a little bit more space between the door. So right here now there's almost no air can go under here, but with, um, with wood, I'll probably go down a half an inch. I don't know how much difference that will make, but Maybe that'll make a difference, get a little bit more airflow into the closet. Um, yeah, so also I'll probably start to keep my house a little bit cooler. Um, if more people are home, leave the AC on um, or usually just don't leave it on just to save energy. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, um, I went over that. There's a four, eight gig sticks. I don't know the brand, probably just some generic brand for eight gig sticks of uh, ECC, so 32 gigs total. Here's my um, SATA card, which is a L it's a LSI based. I think it's an IBM M1015, I think, or it might be just something else, but just a, a uh, I think 9211 is the LSI, 9211 is the chip, but yeah, it just gives you eight SATA threes. So you can see the two breakout cables there going to my cards. Um, this case is like a Norco something. I don't know the model number. I got a long time ago, time ago for like 70 bucks. Um, it's nice. It's, it's pretty heavy, especially with the, all these hard drives in there. Um, I wish it was easier to get to the front ones like it was uh, hot swapped, but um, it's fine for 70 bucks. That's what you can expect. Um, I also drilled in these two SSDs. Um, so yeah, so my, um, my main storage pool in here are these 10 HGST four terabyte hard drives. Um, these are like the server ones too. These are like the um, Cool Spin. Uh, I think they're called Mega Scale. So if you search Cool Spin Mega Scale HGST, those are the hard drives I got. And they're four terabytes. Um, they did really well on all those benchmarks that people have of reliability. Um, so I'm hoping that not many of these will have issues. Um, so I have ten of those as my like my storage, and then I have these two cache drives. So this one's a Samsung eight. Um, 840 non Evo. So if you try to buy an 840, it's probably going to be an Evo. But for a short period, they were selling 840s non Evo. Like there was just 840. And the difference is this is just as fast um, sending out data because it's also TLC, so the same flash, but then it doesn't have the SLC cache to write the data. So writing data is slow. But this is just my read cache. So this is um, in my Z pool, it's acting as an L2 arc. So it doesn't matter. It's so it's just a 250 gig cache. So if files are cached, they can come a little bit faster off there instead of off the spindles. Um, then here is my write cache. Um, it's a, a ZIL in ZFS, ZFS intent log. So it's used in certain cases. Um, this is an Intel 313. It's like a 20 gig SLC um, SSD. Uh, I'm sure I've showed that before, but yeah, so two SSDs, got the 10 hard drives, got the motherboard, CPU, cooler. Yeah, oh yeah, and this is my new uh, network card. This is a, a 10 gigabit. They have ones with two ports, but 
I figure one port is enough. I don't need the extra fibers and everything. And also, this would be constrained by the um, the amount of uh, lanes that I have, unless I put it in this slot. But then my other server that it's connecting to, um, these two slots are gone anyway, so it would also be connecting to this slot, so it would be constrained on that side. So I figure 10 gigabit is enough. And at that point, I'm I think I'm I'm actually getting uh, bottlenecked by the hard drive, so I'm almost getting the 10 gigabit. Um, reading and writing over the network, but um, I think I'm slightly constrained by the hard drives. So, yeah, uh, but the I don't think the NIC itself constrains itself. So, yeah, you can see it's fiber. Here's the cable. Um, I don't know if I showed this before unplugged, but uh, I guess here's a chance to look at it here. The problem with these is they're like 50, 60 bucks, but a lot of times I think the clip breaks. I'm not sure if the clip is broken on this one now because when I try to pull it out, it just seems to come out. I think you're supposed to pull this little rubber and it does something um, but you can just see this actually isn't fiber so they call this a fiber card usually um, but this is a, a little module and it it never actually transfers it to fiber which is actually there's no benefit to transferring it to fiber unless you're going long distances or unless you don't have this module you don't have it like this so I forgot what this is called but um, this is the way I, pref I, when I was doing my research, would prefer to do it. It just stays on copper. For short distances, this is the best. They have copper as in like, it looks like a Cat6 card or Cat5e. Um, I think it's a Cat6 uh, interface. Those aren't the, the best way to, to do 10 gigabit because that has a lot of latency, trying to get it into those tiny wires. But this one is um, basically, it's acting as if it was fiber, but it's just sending it over copper for this whatever three feet that it's going it goes into this server which has an identical card so anyway that's my uh my thing i think i've showed everything you can see this the server's pretty loaded up um, um i mean it's pretty full i even had to cut holes in the top of this case but yeah that's my uh server and my free nas server in a nutshell um if i am going to do any updates it probably will just be the fan like i said cpu and at some point i might put an nvme uh, in here for either read or write um to replace these guys. So that would be pretty cool. Um, I don't know if there'd be any actual benefit because like I said, this is probably the, the bottleneck in the network anyway, or bottleneck in the total system. All right, well, I'll see you guys later, bye.